الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي انزل القران ضياء ونورا وهدى للمتقين ثم الصلاه والسلام على حبيب اله العالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى اله الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of here and the hereafter, who has revealed the Holy Quran to be as a beacon of light and a guide for the believers. We convey our greeting and salutation to the Holy Prophet of Islam and his pure progenies. Sisters and brothers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another program recorded from the Islamic Center of America. I pray that you are all well and keeping safe, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-la'in al-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم كدرت وإذا الجبال سيرت وإذا العشار عطلت وإذا الوحوش حشرت وإذا البحار سجرت وإذا النفوس زوجت وإذا الموؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت وإذا الصحف نشرت وإذا السماء كشطت وإذا الجحيم سعرت وإذا الجنة أزلفت علمت نفس ما أحضرت فلا أقسم بالخنس الجوار الكنس والليل إذا عسعس والصبح إذا تنفس إنه لقول رسول كريم ذي قوة عند ذي العرش مكين مطاع ثم أمين وما صاحبكم بمجنون ولقد رآه بالأفق المبين وما هو على الغيب بضنين وما هو بقول شيطان رجيم فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ صدق الله العلي العظيم In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, when the sun is wrapped up and enfolded, and when the stars fade away, when the mountains are set in motion, and when the... Uh, the, the pregnant camels, she-camels, are abandoned. When the wild beasts come together and the seas burst forth. When the souls are grouped together and when the infant girl buried alive is asked or asks for what reason, for what sin she was slain. When the scrolls of deeds are laid open and the skies are stripped bare, when hell is set ablaze and paradise brought near, then each soul will know what it has brought forward. I swear by the stars which recedes, moves forward and hides, by night as it retreats, and the dawn when it breathes. And that is the world brought by a noble messenger. He is endowed with great power and held in honor before the Lord of the throne. He is obeyed and very trustworthy. And his companion, and this companion of yours is not possessed and he saw him in the clear horizon and holds no grudge against the unseen 
this is not utterance of a devil. Where are you going? This is nothing but a reminder to the people of the world who intend to choose the right path. You will not intend unless the Lord intends. Sadaqallah al Ali al-Azim. Surah Takbir is unique in many ways. First of all, we, we start with the usual background discussion. It is a Makki surah, and like other surahs before that we have addressed, picks up the name of the surah from the first or sometimes the second uh, ayah of the chapter. When the sun, it is, it is, uh, it is when the sun unfolds and ceases to exist just before the hour and uh, the end of time. The chapter is unique in the sense that I don't believe there is another chapter in the Holy Quran that has so many oaths in it, whether from the beginning to the middle. And uh, that's one thing. Number two, the chapter is also uh, unique in the sense that you can divide the chapter into broad segments and hence it focuses on two different issues. Then these broad segments are divided into subsegments that, uh, again, uh, discuss various, various other things. On the broad se segment, the first part of the chapter speaks about what we call the end of time, how uh, the, what uh, it, it's defined as eschatology, how time is going to come to an end, and the world as we know it is wrapped up because it has served its function. So first part is to do uh, with the time of resurrection before and the, the, the after. Uh, under this section, the chapter portrays the complete change that will take place just before and after the folding and the termination of everything, when the world comes to an end. And the second part of the surah talks about the nature of revelation and other issues related to revelation, which is the person who's the, the conveyor, which here, in this case, uh, 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 Jibreel, a conveyor of the message, prophet, which is the receiver of the message, and whom the message is intended for, the ordinary people that they are the, uh, supposed to be guided by this message. But if we were to uh, understand this broad segment or uh, broad segmentation, uh, verse by, f by verse, if we want to uh, understand it, the first six verses talk about the circumstances which will arise before the end of time. What we have called in the previous chapters that we have discussed as ashrat usa. These are conditions that must be fulfilled before the time comes to an end. Then naturally there are the other verses within the Holy Quran, I mean uh, within this chapter that talks about what happens on the day of judgment, the resurrection. A complete coming to an end of this order that we are familiar with. This is something that we have discussed in the previous uh, chapters that we have um, talked about the commentary uh, of these chapters. The sun, the moon, mountains, and the most cherished and favorite things will be abandoned. Even the wild beast will only, that normally uh, each one will fear each other under this circumstance will only fear the common calamity which is falling on everyone. 
and their senses does not or do not register anything else beyond the fact that uh, there is a common ca calamity that they need all of them to deal with and uh, address. The next section, which is verse 7 to 14, describes the circumstances that will, be, uh, will arise uh, and after everybody has been resurrected on the day of judgment. People here will be categorized on the basis of their belief. Naturally, in our daily life, people come together on a different basis, some common language, uh, family structure, uh, marriage, then you have the country of birth, etc., etc. None of these categories and designations are, will have any meaning on the day of judgment. It is faith and deed that become the primary conditions under which people are brought together. So people who have similar deeds and they have similar ideology, we have talked about this in the previous chapters, where uh, families are brought together based on whether they, are, they fall within the category of muttaqi or none, sub, submissive to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or sinfulness. So the sinfulness will attract sinful people will attract certain group of people similar to themselves, and the muttaqi, the God conscious, etc., will attract other people similar to themselves. So these are the categories uh, that uh, people are grouped together under. Also on the day of judgment, the innocent and the oppressed, they ask for justice to be served. And in this particular uh, chapter, the, the fate of young girls that, have, that were either dumped or killed or uh, buried alive because of some cultural uh, habits of the jahiliyyah mindset that they considered women or girls to be somehow not right for the family. Uh, this is discussed and uh, the account of people who have committed these kind of crimes are laid down. Uh, paradise are brought near and heaven will lead bare and the hell is ignited. These are broad description of what we call in the first section. Uh, verse 15 to 18, again we start as uh, the chapter moves towards the, the second uh, conceptual theme which focuses no longer on what the chapter started to, to talk about before and after uh, the, the, the end of time. This time the focus is on revelation, the importance of revelation, uh, and how critical, critical this uh, revel revelation is and the role that this revelation is expected to, pl to play for the guidance of uh, humanity. Then ultimately, uh, warnings to the disbelievers and uh, the chapter comes to an end. Now let's go and start uh, as much as we can within the constraint of time, address verse by verse uh, of uh, this, th th this chapter. The chapter begins with a number of oath. And because of the numbers, I believe it's unique, no other chapter in the Holy Quran has nearly 12 or 13 oath, qasam in it, uh, trying to prove one point or the other. Uh, similar kind of thing we, we discussed in Surah Al-Infitar. We talked about what happens to the sun, which was uh, the, the chapter we talked last. Takvir means for something to fold and to wrap up or roll up as the scroll has happened. In Surah Al-Anbiya, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explicit in the sense, يَوْمَ نَطْوَ السَّمَاءِ كَطَيَّ السَّجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ 
The day will come when we wrap up, fold and wrap up the earth or the, the whole cosmos in the same manner that the scrolls are wrap, wrapped up. Uh, the day when uh, we roll up the skies like the scroll loads up in, in, in writing. What it means that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, it will come, it, they will serve their purpose, and there will be a time in which the, by the end of that, the, the, the time for them, everything is wrapped up and finished. Uh, and the sun will be extinguished, that leads to, we talked about this in a few of the previous chapters, that leads to the collapse of the entire universe. And this is something that even uh, current uh, science has talked about it, that uh, uh, as there, there is, a, a, although the debate is when, but uh, the, the end of time happening with the Big Bang, that. Uh, uh, the, the sun losing its gravitational force and ultimately uh, leads to the whole collapse of the universe. If the sun ceases to exist, then the next one, whether Nujum and Kadarat. If you imagine Nujum, which is the stars, are like lanterns of the sky, once the source of light terminated and comes to an end, there is the, the stars lose their light and luster. After talking about the cosmos, then the verse moves into وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ The majestic objects on earth that we consider them to be solid, stable, uh, according to this verse, appears to, uh, th these monuments, the great monuments, uh, will set in motion, they begin to move. That's uh, huge earthquakes that is going to, ha to happen. This concept again uh, has been addressed in at least two chapter, other chapters in Mursalat, وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ نُسِفَتْ Like a, s a shifting sand. And uh, in Surah Al-Qara'a, وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ Corded wool, literally, pieces become soft because of the consequence of uh, the uh, earthquakes and the, the calamity of the situation. We talked in the past, because the surah and the revelation of Quran was directly first and foremost towards the Arab of Jailiyyah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a as metaphor, uses something which is close to their mind. In Surah al ghashiyah we talked about, again, verse, أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ For uh, people of Jahiliyyah that traveled through the desert, the concept of the moon, the sun, the desert, sand, and Ibl, the camel, are very close concept to their mind. Along the same line, وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطْلَتْ It refers to a, something which the jahili mindset never even contemplated doing. A she-camel which is just before having a child or a calf, nine, ten month, ten month old, would not be abandoned under any circumstance. It's a uh, cherished possess uh, possession for the Arabs. So this verse is trying to draw the attention of the Jahili mindset that even the most cherished and uh, close to one's heart for the Arabs, people would leave because of the enormity of the circumstance. What it says that وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطْلَتْ The plural of Ashura which is the 10-month pregnant she-camel, before our, uh, th that the, in the light of the mountain and everything else, the desert life, to drive it home, it tells the Arab Jahiliyyah that something that you do not even anticipate and you would not do, but the force of circumstance, 
imposes on you such a condition that you care less about your possession or, or anything else. In other uh, surahs, we had yom, that, that verse in the Holy Quran that on the day of judgment, people don't think about their fathers, their parents, their brothers, their family, or anything else. Everyone is concerned about their own life and their own, uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, going to deal with them and their own action. So they will, everybody will be preoccupied uh, with the immediate state that they are in, and they care less about what happens to everything else. Well, uh, there was another verse in Yoma, Tarawnaha tadhalu kullu murda'atan amma arda'at. Another example that Quran gives, you would not imagine that uh, a suckling mother shall forget their infant under any circumstance. This in Surah Al-Hajj, uh, in the verse 2 of Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to bring the calamity, the enormity of that calamity, that to the point that even mothers that have babies will throw them, would leave them, because it, it, it is such a huge uh, preoccupation that one cares less and uh, doesn't even uh, care about anything else. To drive this point home, وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ When the wild beasts come together. As I was trying to think about an, a, a situation in which the wild beasts have no attendant and wander around, I couldn't help this, this current crisis that we are in, the COVID-19 crisis around end of March and beginning of April, when everybody, the fear of this uh, pandemic was such that uh, every animal was left to themselves. So everybody went inside and wild animal, uh, beast and everything else began to wander the streets where the streets were empty. I've seen uh, streets in Spain uh, literally, nobody was uh, wandering around apart from beasts and animals from the zoos or anything else. In Italy and other places were the same, where you had even uh, seals and, un and other animals, sea animals, the now that they were secure or assured that there are no, no humans around would come and wander around the streets. So there are instances that وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ uh, that the wild beasts, they come together. Under normal circumstance, there is a clear mark and designation between one animal or the other. A, a, a lion would not be uh, standing side by side with its prey. But once the enormity of the situation gets over, overcome these people, they really don't see the concept of prey or anything else. It brings every, everybody together, wondering about the reality that they have to deal with. Again, now the concept of seas, uh, breaking their, uh, uh, their limits and uh, spreading around, etc. This is something that we have talked about even in Fujirat in Surah Al Infitar. The day of judgment and resurrection. Uh, then, this is something we just briefly explained on the Day of Judgment. If you are righteous and you follow Ahlul Bayt, then you will be taken and grouped with Ahlul Bayt and with the righteous people. If you are sinful, then naturally you will be uh, associated with those who are well known for their sinfulness. So on the day of judgment and resurrection, different categories that we have had, friendship, marriage, family, language, country, etc., etc., are no longer of worth. What we have is uh, on that day, 
whether one is one's deed and uh, uh, how the soul is attracted uh, towards individuals that are righteous or they are wrongdoers. وَإِذَا الْمَوْعُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ A habit, a very barbaric habit that infant girls were considered, or girls in generally, female was, were considered by the, uh, uh, the jahili male-orientated uh, community to be the source of uh, disgrace for them, particularly in the future. So they would dump the infant, infant girls in uh, graves and simply kill them and suffocate them so, uh, that they will not uh, grow older and become, as they indicated, the source of uh, uh, somehow uh, shame uh, for, the, for the tribe and for the community. Uh, this is something that on the day of judgment, all of these infant children that have been killed will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the justice to be served and those who have committed these heinous crimes to be answered, to answer for the crimes that they have committed. We have a number of ahadith, even from narrated from the Sunni sources, that uh, the second khalif, Umar ibn Khattab, uh, admitted in front of the Holy Prophet that he had done this during the Jahiliyyah with at least two or three of his daughters. وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ On the Day of Judgment, again, it's some of these concepts might appear to be a repeat or uh, a concept that can't we have heard before. Uh, sometimes these uh, concepts are outlined in a slightly different formulation, but in, in Quran trying to attempt to explain to the, to the individuals the crisis that they are going to see in, on the Day of Judgment, uh, this is, uh, is repeated. On the Day of Judgment, we have, the suhuf nushrat, we have seen in the previous uh, re, uh, chapters that we have done, uh, people know what they have sent forward. Uh, when the deeds, the book of deeds, are opened up and uh, people uh, find out exactly what they have done. وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ كُشِطَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعْرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ All these about the skies to be removed, scraped and bear, uh, laid bare. Uh, the uh, jahim, which is hell, is ignited. And Jannah, Uzlafat, and brought near. All of these oath, the, pre, the first section of the, the surah, is to lead towards what we call the conceptual theme that wants to prove its importance. Alimat nafsun ma ahdarat. It's only on the day of judgment when all of these happen, when all souls find out that what they have done and what they have sent forward. We talked about this in Surah Al-Infitar. We said that in that uh, surah, uh, the verse, ma qaddamat wa akharat, whatever they have sent forth and whatever they have left behind. Here, the conceptual thesis is that, the, uh, the, that all the, the uh, oath that has been uh, sworn that on the day of judgment people will find out what they have the deeds that they have uh, committed and what they have uh, sent for, forth they are all ready for them to see in another verse iqra uh, kitabak we have verses in, the, in this verse in the Holy Quran, that the book is open and put in front of the individual to read for himself or herself. This first part of the chapter, which focused on Ashrat al the conditions necessary to be fulfilled before the end of time, and what happens after the end of time which ultimately leads to the point where people realize what they have done in their life. Uh, this is the first part. 
Then it transitions, uh, the chapter transitions into a different. Again, because there is a second uh, conceptual thesis that comes later, starts with the second group of oath. فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ الْجَوَارِ الْكُنَّسِ وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا أَسْعَسْ وَالصُبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسْ Some of these themes are recurring one as we have talked about in, the, in, the pre, in other chapters. So, I swear not, which is linguistically is a, is, is a clear indication that to stress the point that I swear, grammatical style, I swear by the stars which when they are their seed. They move forward and hide. So you see them at one instance blinking, shining, and the other instance they are not there. By night as it retreats, and by dawn when it breathes, at the beginning of the dawn. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly talks about in the Holy Quran. The late section, late part of the night, before Salat al-Subh is a unique time for uh, people to, f to wake up and offer Salat al-Layl and communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this uh, notion has been repeated in different verses of the Holy, the Holy Quran regarding when وَاللَّيْلَ إِذَا عَسْعَسْ وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسْ when, when the night is uh, retreating drawing to an end and the morning and dawn breathes and begins uh, and starts إنه لقول رسول كريم is now again uh, this is the conceptual theme that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَلَا أُقْسَمُ بِالْخُنَّسَ الْجَوَارِ الْكُنَّسَ all these oath are leading to the second conceptual theme which is that this book of revelation is uh, not trying to undermine or refute the false assumption by the Quraysh that this book is not a revelation and the Holy Prophet is not a prophet. So now it focuses on this, on this refutation and that invented about the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet. In Surah Al-Shu'ara and Surah Najm, we have similar kind of uh, uh, verses regarding the, con uh, the refutation of the Quraysh and the Mushrikeen about Quran, that it is somehow the work of a devil or uh, something else. In, in these chapters, certainly, uh, this, uh, they, they are being refuted. Innahu la qawlu rasulin kareem. This book, is a book in which uh, the, the, uh, their messenger uh, is sent towards uh, the, the Holy Prophet and it is something that, the Holy, uh, that this messenger uh, is bringing forth. So a noble messenger, Rasulun Kareem, here is taken to be uh, Ark angel uh, Jebrail, other people, other commentators have talked about that it might be related to the Holy Prophet himself. Uh, this verse is repeated in Surah Al-Waqa'ah in exact the same formulation. Surah Al-Haqqa in exactly Haqqa's uh, verse number 40 in exact innahu la qawlu rasulun kareem repeated over there where the Quran refutes the accusation that the prophet is a poet or somehow sha'ir or soothsayer, kahin, uh, re rejects this, uh, then talks about the quwwatin inda dil arsh makin, this uh, unique noble messenger which is, we talked about earlier, uh, that uh, these, the, talking about the conveyor, the receiver, and people who this uh, message is intended for. Uh, he is in, in, endowed with great power and hurls in honor before the Lord of the throne. He is obeyed and very trustworthy. So this is characteristics of Jibreel. Muta'an thamma ameen wa ma sahibukum bi majnoon. Now focuses on the life of the Holy Prophet. Then the subject is changed after uh, purifying of the source of the Holy Quran uh, addresses the fact that uh, 
the Holy Prophet is possessed. One of the, uh, the, the accusations or of uh, that the, the uh, people of Quraysh and Mushrikeen had about the Holy Prophet. Uh, and the concept of revelation, wahi, that came unpacked in Ufuq al Mubin, uh, expansive space before one's eye. Again, this is something that in Surah Al Najm, uh, uh, was in the uppermost horizon, he actually came across the message. This is not the utterance of a cursed devil. Again, reinforces in Rasul in Karim in verse number 19. Then the, the ch chapter moves and, uh, with a question, an expression of amazement, knowing how time is going to end, knowing how one is going to question on the day of judgment, knowing that one's deeds are going to be presentable uh, and open book for everyone and for himself or herself to see, knowing that this Quran is coming from heaven, uh, the, uh, the noble messenger, the one that receives and everything else and what is in intended for, what is next for you? Where are you going? The Quran uh, is asking people, where will you turn to? There is no other guidance and, uh, but Allah, and no guide but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's part of underlining and consolidating the fact that there is only one source of reality that we need to cherish and be close to, and th that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran is the forewarner. And, the, uh, and if Quraysh follow the, the path outlined by the Quran, they will gain. Indeed, this book is a reminder, a forewarner for the entire world. Yes, it is a forewarner. But at the same time, whoever wishes to follow the command of the Quran will succeed. Remember in Surah Al-Insan, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلِ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا The choice is left. There is no force. One is left given the free will, the option to decide for oneself. But knowing fully well that under, if you make a choice and you ultimately fall with Ashab al-Shimal, the consequence is dire. And if you make a choice and you become with Ashab al-Yameen, then the, the, the reward is immense. Uh, but generally speaking, you will not will, but that God, Lord of the world, wills. Under the whole uh, greater scheme of things, our will is somehow associated with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this surah, uh, it just, I just remembered that Abdul Basit, the, the Egyptian reciter of the Holy Quran, gained global fame with the Muslim community for recitation of this surah. If you go to, to uh, YouTube and call it this, I remember as a child, the, the Surat Ida uh, Shamsu Kowarat, the voice of Abdul Basit, was uh, recited in Majalis. So, Surat Infitar and Surat Kowarat, Takweer, we have a hadith from uh, one of the Imams, I believe Imam Jafar al Sadiq, that says if people really want to find out what happens at the end of time and what happens in the hereafter, as far as where they should they locate themselves, they should focus in a better understanding of Surah Al-Takbir and Surah Al-Infitar. I hope that uh, within this brief time that we had, we tried to be as uh, economical with the explanation as possible, but one could spend a huge amount of time dealing about each one verse of the, this, this chapter. May Allah bless you all. Thank you very much. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته